Right. Uh, first question, PJ, how about you take this one? How many cycles do you think are realistic for most teams this season? Oh, most teams or most competitive teams? <laughs> yeah, the, answer, the question is most teams. So. Most teams, I'm going to say like two. Like, because I have low expectations because I'm a cynical old man. But uh, I think most competitive teams are going to be... I'm going to say like... 12 so with no math behind it just my gut feeling here's what i'll say in typical first games the rule of thumb that i've always used was the 842 i shouldn't say always used it because there was obviously a point when i didn't use it because i had to develop it but um where eight cycles is what you get from the best teams in a match where they're completely unimpeded um four cycles is what you get from really good teams when they're in a group and um two cycles is kind of like you know, the average that we typically see. This is what we've seen in the past. This year's game's a little bit different mm-hmm. because of the nature of the game pieces. There are shorter sprint distances that teams have to make, so there will be changes. But I can say this, going back all the way to about 2007, 2005 as well, this A42 rule is kind of applied. So I don't expect too much deviation from it. If you think about it, like let's go back to 2017. Four rotors didn't happen at most events weeks one, two, or three. And that would have required, from elimination round alliances, an average of four cycles. Again, everyone's going to say those cycles were a lot longer. And they were. But there was a lot of similarities between those games. So mm-hmm. just kind of keep that in mind. I think it's really... Here, here's what happens every year. Teams are way too optimistic about what the average team can do. Mm-hmm. And then they underestimate what the best teams in the world can do. That's two separate paths. Yeah. And so just keep that knowledge in your mind when you're planning strategies and mitigate you know, as you go along. Also, the Insights tab on um, the Blue Alliance gives you all this data from the past three years. So you can take a look to see what the rates of four rotors happening, what the rates of towers being captured were. And you can make some data-driven decisions because you remember these games don't tip... And, you know, you're building a model here, so you're making assumptions about this season, but you can use the data from past seasons and try and see what's different there. So, and then building, I, building off of that, somebody in chat asked, how many, I'm going to ask you because I have no idea, how many cycles will 254 have on average this year? Or a top team, you know, another top five robots in the world. I mean, I, I know this is going to be a cop-out answer, but I think, how many cycles were they doing last year? And just keep that in mind. Because it's, I, I bet you what you think and what the actual answer is different. So, like the top teams at championship last year, top teams, like in their like, like um, uh, like I know like Stoy Pulse, which was the high high, the they were scoring the most cubes per match of any team in their division in the championship. Team six ninety four was doing seven. Mm-hmm. So just just keep yeah. this stuff. I mean, everyone's going to say, oh well, they had to go high every time, and right, yes, they did, but just. There's things happen in every year. There'll be an excuse for every game ever. There's, there's a lot of factors going on there. Like, I will say that cycle, cycling this year is definitely easier than past games. But there are still a lot of issues with visibility, lining up, the tightness of space, the nature of these game pieces, and the, the cargo being in your way. These things all add up. Fair. A uh, question from Yamo221. Also, for the whole no extending side of the frame while on the opposite side, if you can take a hatch from their loading station without extending, is that legal? PJ, they're just like, it's all the questions for you, dude. I believe so, because I need to... That's, that's not, what I, uh, <laughs> not what I prepped for tonight. Um, uh, so I so my, my so. view on it is that it is legal yeah. uh, unless you contact a robot while you're in their hab zone, yes, retrieving yes. it, or... If that robot contacts you, because uh, it's like the null zone last year. If you're in there, caveat emptor. So yes, yes, yes you can um, steal that panel. But if you're in there, you know, like some team out there is just going to come tap, 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 and boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So, uh, do you think the rocket RP will be as common as the four rotor RP in 2017 from Smith K2700? That is a good question. Uh what was? I should pull up TBA because I don't know what the what was like the nation like the year long four rotor. You keep thinking and I will pull it up for you. Okay, because I I think it's going to be similar because was I think it was pretty low. It it was definitely it was definitely low. So I'm going to get you the season long one here. 
Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, I think it was around, I mean, like, I, I'm thinking maybe 15%. I think that might be high. That might be a high estimate. Yeah. Uh, hold on. It's just loading. Okay, well. So, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but, terrible internet here. Yeah. But in, in that way, just, well. The year-long um, aggregate for, oh, sorry, I loaded 2016. Uh, <laughs> but, okay. like. Yeah, like the, I I know we're kind of giving you the suspense here. So four rotors engaged. Oh, PJ, it was way lower than you thought. Yeah, Eight, I was saying I, th- I thought that was like a really high estimate when I said Eight point eight percent for the year. If we go to St. Louis Championship to give yeah. the range, which was the highest scoring event of the season, fifty percent at champs. Okay. So for like most of our teams who are watching, let's say you're competing in a week four event, which is like a good estimation of what was going on the four rotor rate in quals 3.3 percent and i th- i think i'm in the camp that i think the rocket LP- rp will be similarly low because what what would you say i forgot the number it's what 24 game pieces for four uh, no that's not 20, right. uh 12 12 cycles 12 sorry it's 12 yeah i don't know doubled it for some reason but yeah but i think it's going to be similarly yeah i think low. it's going I, I think it's going to be low as well. Um, so again, the, the sprint distance is shorter, but you are going high. Remember in 2012, I mean, 2017, no one was going high. You could just go passive. So yep. low is the answer. We got a lot of questions here, so we're trying to go a little bit faster here. Uh, from K Bennett 199, one of the teams last year we mentored used the EveryBot design and were finalists in one event and winners of the other event. That's FRC 7256. Congratulations to FRC 7256. You're like now my fourth favorite team in FRC. <laughs> Um, from LGP, LJP737, what do you think of normal driving with vision-based auto lining up during Sandstorm? I think, I think that's, that's awesome. That's probably the dream, right? Like, that's probably ideal. Because yeah, like, I, and I think it's doable for a lot of teams who normally do, like, a one-game piece auto, is to automize, the, autonom, autonomize whatever, <laughs> the routine a little bit, but still use your driving skill to get you there. Automate, mm-hmm. thank you. Words, difficult. <laughs> Uh, Yamo 221. So many questions, Yamo. I like it. Uh, I like the idea of every bots, but I also find it to kind of take away some of the struggle of FRC. Now, opinions vary a lot, but I'd rather be inspired by an every bot or alternatives and at least partially design it as a team ourselves and learn more than build an every bot straight from the plan. And like Yamo, that's a cool philosophy and that is your philosophy and that's great. But like with FRC, Every team is going to do their own thing. Some teams like to have one mentor design the robot on their own. Other teams like to have only kids working on stuff. Some teams do not want to, they don't want to open YouTube during the build season because they don't want to see anything while other teams want to use as much information as they can. And I think it's just all about finding what works for you. But like the story that um, Kay Bennett just told us about 7256, to me, that's really cool that they, a team that they mentored, a rookie team just built in every bot and had a lot of success. And I know those kids would have been inspired by that process. So that's cool. Right, PJ? I agree. <laughs> I'm going to agree with everything. Every every team's got to do their own thing. I've been a proponent of that for years. I don't care how you run your team. As long as you, like, you know, I'll run my team my way. You run your team your way. Do what you want. Do what's best for you. All right. Uh, from at 830, Karthik, what you can do and what you can consistently do with defense are two massively different things. That is very, very correct. Um st- Robots look amazing on their own practice fields by themselves. And it's easy to pump yourself up and be like, yo, I can do 12 cycles. I can complete a rocket by myself. And then you come to a a real field and like on a practice day, and then like you're only doing like eight cycles because there's a little bit of interference. And then, you know, you're playing against truck town and they come to your side of the field and then suddenly you're doing two cycles. And so it, it absolutely changes up. Um, from Adventure Camp, how important is scoring on both sides? How could it affect improved cycles? PJ, what do you think about um, double-sided scoring? What do they mean by both sides? I th- I'm assuming that they mean by being able to score both forward and backwards. Okay. Um, if you can do it in a way that doesn't... I don't know if it's worth sacrificing other design components for, uh, in my personal estimation of the game. Um, I think if you can do it. I mean, there's got to be a benefit if you can drive it well, but a, a well-driven robot that can score on one side is going to be just as fast as an average-driven robot that can score on both sides, right? Like, 
it I, depends on what you want to do. I'll say this last year. There were a lot of very good teams last year who could score on both sides. And I think that's going to inspire teams to try and do that this year. Mm-hmm. But just remember, like teams like 254, 179, um, 842, 5406, they mainly only scored backwards during auto. And it was an optimization for autonomous. And during driver control, for the most part, these teams were scoring forwards because that's just what's more natural. It takes a lot of training with your drivers to get them used to scoring backwards. And if you don't have a lot of time to practice, it's hard to do. The other thing to think about last year, there was a direct line, a direct heading from game pieces to um, the scoring target where you didn't need to turn. So it, it kind of made sense to go back and forth and score backwards this year. Whether you're scoring forwards or backwards, the rocket is a, is 90 degrees away from where you're loading your game pieces. So a side go for the most part, you're going to have to pick a turn. So it's as important as it seems. It's one of those things that if you have the design capabilities and the resources to do it, yes, you'll be able to shave some time, but it just comes down to trade-offs, whether it's that important to you. So. All right. Then, oh, uh, this is I a question. I, our last question CJ. for... For Karthik, how do you feel about not being allowed to click to kick the glass this year? I mean, I understand why. The last <laughs> thing we want is an event being delayed in the finals because I kicked the glass and the the sandstorm screens fell over. Totally get. It. But man, like this is I, I just I this this is hurts me because like it's just like been my thing and like what am I gonna do? And like I'm getting older. And there's not many years left of being able to kick the glass before I blow out my ACL. So, like, I I hope that the, the return happens in 2020, and I hope that my old man legs can still get up there and uh, make make the kick. You but just kick the I'm robots miss instead. It. Oh, but don't worry. There are plans because you know you could. You're not allowed to kick the field glass, but what if I brought my own? So just, that's what I want. Let's just hold on. You know, it's a, it's a new volunteer you, you, job, glass holder. <laughs> Car- yeah, Karthik, you, what is your you first? Nev- uh, what's your first event that you're emceeing this year? I'm doing the Durham District of Ontario Week One at the uh, at Durham College. So Durham Durham District, make sure you guys uh, catch that one and, and watch because uh, I'm going to guess he has something in store for that. I well, you know, we will see what I can come up Kick with. But, um, I'm going to I'm going to follow all the rules like I always do. <laughs> Why are people laughing? I, I, you know, have stepped over the guardrail in my life. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.